More than 10% of the U.S. population has been diagnosed with diabetes. So this is a pretty prevalent diagnosis and you're going to want to know those coding guidelines. So let's take a look. Hey everyone, I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, blogger, YouTuber, and content creator for medical coding. And on my channel, I discuss tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you succeed in your medical coding career. So diabetes. I have some friends down south that have told me that diabetes in their area is referred to as the sugar. And the reason being is because diabetes means that you have excess sugar in your blood. One of the first things you're going to want to understand when you're looking at documentation and selecting the right code for diabetes is the type of diabetes. Most commonly, you'll see type 1, type 2, and then occasionally, on a rare occasion, you will see 1.5. Type 1 diabetes is often referred to as insulin-dependent diabetes because these patients' bodies no longer produce insulin and they usually have to get it through an injection. They don't know the exact cause of type 2 diabetes, but it's assumed to be related to things like age, genetics, inactivity, possibly even diet. Type 2 diabetes isn't always necessarily treated with medication. It could be treated with things like diet change or changes in your activity or exercise levels. If the type of diabetes isn't documented, it actually defaults to type 2 diabetes. Now, if that patient has that diabetes 1.5, which is kind of a combination of type 1 and type 2, you code it to category E13, which is for a other specified type of diabetes. Diabetes can be really tough for providers because when they go into the EMR and they are looking for the specific diabetes code and they type in diabetes, a huge list of different codes will come up. And I've had providers personally tell me they don't have time to scroll through the, all those different selections in the EMR, so they just pick whatever one is on the top. And usually that one on the top is E11.9, unspecified type 2 diabetes. Because there are so many different types of diabetes codes, providers will get confused and go, okay, well, which one do I pick if the patient has all different types of diabetes? So if the patient has, for example, diabetic retinopathy and diabetic uh, nephropathy, you can use both codes. You can use as many different specified types of diabetes that you need to. The only thing you can't do is use a specified code and then use the E11.9 unspecified code because it's not unspecified if you know what the specific type of diabetes is. So those are exclusive of each other. You can't use a specified code and use the unspecified code together. And you have to be careful about your linkage because the guidelines with diabetes are that anything that comes under the term with in the alphabetic index is automatically assumed to be linked even if the provider doesn't specifically say they're linked. So for example, if the provider documents number one, diabetes mellitus, number two, foot ulcer, and you go into that alphabetic index and you look under diabetes and then underneath that it says with, which is actually the first thing that comes up right underneath diabetes is that with category. Diabetes with foot ulcer gives you a combination code. So you used, even though the provider didn't say it's a diabetic foot ulcer, you, because of the coding guidelines, it says that's assumed to be linked. So diabetes with foot ulcer is assumed to be a diabetic foot ulcer. So anything under that with category in the alphabetic index is assumed to be linked even without the provider direct linkage. Now, the other thing you want to keep an eye out for when you're coding for diabetes is that insulin usage. Any current or long-term usage of insulin has an add-on code, Z79.4, and that's for the use of insulin or oral hypoglycemic drugs if it's documented. And be careful with those pregnant patients. If a patient is already has diabetes and they're pregnant, you would assign a code from category 024 and then add their normal diabetic code that you would add, either if it's an unspecified E11.9 or if they have a specified type, utilize that. Whatever that specified type of diabetes is from E08 to E13. And remember with those pregnancy guidelines, Pregnancy codes take priority almost over almost any other ICD-10 code. If it's gestational diabetes and they just developed that diabetes during the pregnancy, it's pregnancy related, make sure you're assigning the code from category 024. 
And if it's secondary diabetes, meaning that there is something else that is the underlying cause of that diabetes, make sure that when you are assigning that E code, that diabetes E code, that you are checking in that tabular list for the sequencing instructions, because depending on what code you're assigning and those other conditions, they have in the tabular list the specific guidelines regarding sequencing. I hope that helped clarify some of your questions about diabetes coding. And if it did, make sure you give this video a big like, a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and support my channel. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you get an alert and you never miss another episode. Thank you everyone for supporting my channel. I will see you in the next episode. And until then, just keep on coding on.